In this video, we're going to talk about one of your favorite topics, and that is email design. Email design is also one of my favorite topics, and that is because email design is essential to making your email successful and helping them convert your subscribers into customers. Even if your strategy is amazing and your copy is really top notch, if your design sucks and doesn't present information in the right way to the reader, it doesn't make it attractive and then also just easy to digest, then your email is not going to perform well. This sucks. I've noticed a few very cool trends this year when it comes to email design that I wanna share with you in this video. And if it's helpful, please give me a like uh, to this video and also subscribe to the channel so you never miss anything cool when it comes to email and e-commerce marketing. If you're new here, my name is Casey. I run Luck & Co Agency. We help eight and seven-figure e-commerce brands maximize the revenue from their email and SMS marketing. I've personally been doing this my whole career, so I've seen all types of emails, and I have a secret inbox where I'm subscribed to everything, literally everything I can think of, especially when it comes to direct-to-consumer brands and, and e-commerce brands. And I've seen some interesting things in my inbox lately, which I'm gonna share with you. Let's get rolling. Design trend number one, typography-based GIFs. So GIFs have become very popular in email design. I'd be curious to know if you're using GIFs in your emails, definitely let me know in the comments. We do use them a lot at Luck & Co because we've seen that they really help increase click rate and click-through rate as well as conversion rate sometimes as well. And it's just great for engagement, so we do use them a lot. But one particular use case that's interesting for using GIFs is using them when playing with types and fonts and bringing attention to important parts of the emails and using GIFs with that purpose. Let me show you what I mean. This is an example from a brand called Bloom and see how they just have a very simple GIF where the color is filling in the, the letters uh, and the words at the top to call attention to a back in stock message. Very simple, elegant, and yet it achieves the purpose of catching my attention and bringing it to the part that they want me to read. This is an example from a serial brand called Surreal, and they use a typography-based GIF a little bit differently. Uh, as you can see, it's bringing attention to this middle part of the email that might have otherwise not gotten as much attention. Here's yet another example from another brand, also called Bloom, but it's a different brand. They sell skincare, also very simple yet effective. Here's yet another one, uh, another example that's a little bit different. And then finally, this one that's kind of bright and red in your face from Adidas. More complex than the other ones that I've shown you. Honestly, I think there's a little bit too much going on over here, but it also works. Let me know in the comments, what do you think about this? Are you using GIFs? Do you know how to create GIFs? And maybe a tutorial on how to create GIFs for emails would be helpful. I'm all ears, I love comments, so let's chat over there. But now on to design trend in emails number two, and that is creating and using very narrow emails for desktop. So if you are in email marketing, if you send emails, you know that more than 50% of your subscribers actually open their emails on mobile. And for brands that we manage at Luck & Co, it's closer to 70%, which means only three people out of every 10 will see the email that you send on their desktop. And yet, most brands, the vast majority of brands, still design their emails for desktop first, and then they optimize it for mobile. And just based on the numbers, it should be the other way around. An interesting trend that I noticed in my inbox is that some brands choose to create like mobile first emails, but then just send them to everybody and don't even create a desktop version at all because the mobile version works fine on desktop. And I'm going to show you examples of that right now. One of the brands that does that consistently is called Honey Mamas. They sell this really cool chocolate that I actually really like myself. I'm a customer of theirs. As you can see, this is a very narrow email when I'm looking at it on my desktop. There's a lot of space on the right and on the left, and yet, all of the text is very readable, it's large enough, the buttons are very adequate and correct, and it all looks wonderful. Here's another email from them again. As you can see, 
Everything is very legible. It's attractive, looks great. The information is presented in an easy way for me to read. It's narrow and yet it works on desktop. And the cool thing is they don't have to optimize it for mobile at all. They just send the same version for desktop and mobile and it works fine. I think it's super efficient for the email production process and the team. And that's something that we've started implementing as well on our team. And just to give you an example to compare it to, to something that's more standard for desktop design, uh, here's an example from Ali Yoop. Let me switch quickly to Honey Mamas. There you go. I think the difference here is really visible. And by the way, here's an example from Feastables, which is a brand by this very famous YouTuber. And their DTC brand is actually very cool and they're doing a lot of interesting things. And yet their email is very optimized for desktop. Whereas I bet that like 80%, if not more of their particular audience, who I'm sure tends to be younger, opens their emails on mobile, of course. What do you think about this one? Will you start designing your emails differently after this video? Do you think it's worth switching to mobile first design and only afterwards optimize for desktop? Let me know in the comments. The last email design trend that I want to talk about today is creating emails as all image emails. That's what we call it here at Luck & Co. All image emails is when you design your email outside of your email platform. So if you're using Klaviyo, you design it outside of Klaviyo on Figma or uh, in Canva, for example, or if you're on MailChimp, you don't design it on MailChimp, you go to Canva or Figma, you design it there, and then you export your design as a series of JPEGs and you just upload it into your email platform. And a few years ago, it was very different. Most senders would actually create the email directly in MailChimp or Klaviyo or something similar and then send it. Uh, whereas now, kind of more and more brands just upload JPEGs and send the email that way. And when you do that, there are a lot of considerations that you need to take into account for deliverability because the text to image ratio is one of the most important things for your deliverability. Meaning if you have too many images and too little text, your emails will tend to go to spam more and will definitely go to the promotions tab uh, way more than to the primary tab. There are ways to deal with that, such as, for example, alt text. If you're uploading your entire design as images, you should always add alt text on the back end to make sure that that ratio still holds. But the reason brands are doing this is because most people, as I just mentioned, open their emails on mobile. And what's interesting that we find from all of the accounts that we manage is that the best time for open rate tends to be in the PM. So people are opening most of their emails in the evening, which means most of your recipients see your emails when they're using dark mode on their phone. Because for most users, dark mode turns on automatically in the evening. And then some people just prefer dark mode and they use it all the time. Although I don't get it. I don't like dark mode, but most people tend to like it. And then again, it's automatic for, for a lot of people. And so when you're viewing emails in dark mode, unless you do this all image design, your email tends to look really wonky and there's really no good solution for that. And that's the reason I think more and more brands just turn to all image design. I'm going to open a few different emails in my inbox to show you exactly what I mean. So for example, this email from Organica, looks great over here, but this is desktop. I'm going to show you my mobile phone in just a second. But if I try to drag something from here, you'll see that this whole thing is just one image. So now let me open it on my phone. There we go. I'm in dark mode and everything shows up just fine. All of the branding is preserved. It's very legible and accessible um, and it looks great. Now let me open this other email from another brand and look how wonky it's looking. There's still a bunch of images that are imported in here, but they're mixed with some other images that are either not optimized for dark mode or they're mixed with like this button that's not part of an image. And this looks a lot worse than this other email that we just looked at. And for example, this blog is not optimized for dark mode at all. Like I'm not even able to read what's on here. And so I hope this gives you an idea of why all image emails are really preferable these days, especially with people opening stuff on their phone, being in dark mode all the time and 
Also, just being used to emails that work. That's another thing that's really important when it comes to email design. If you make it even a little bit hard for the person to digest your email and understand what you're trying to tell them, they're just not going to do the work. We're all used to things being super easy, things being super fast. So if you're asking your readers to do the work of understanding what you're trying to tell them, you can forget it. They're not going to do it. Make it simple, make it look great and seamless and efficient, and that's when your emails are going to work. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I have another video on email design on my channel that's going to be linked somewhere in the corner. And if you're not subscribed yet, make sure that you subscribe to the channel so that we can see each other again. And with that, I will see you in the next video.